Hello, I'm Anthony Ward, also known as Ant CGI, and welcome to a new series where I explore rigging a car using Autodesk Maya. After focusing mainly on character rigs in my other courses, I thought I would move over and now look at something more mechanical. So, over the next series of videos, we will look mainly at rigging the wheels and suspension, covering things like wheel rotation, tyre pressure, and interactive pistons, hinges, and springs. So first, in this video, we will look at automating wheel rotation. Before we dive in, I just wanted to remind you that the files for all my courses, along with lots of other goodies, are available to download from the Ant CGI store. Downloading them is just one way you can help support this channel and keep these videos free. Another is to treat me to a coffee at my coffee page. But the better option, which offers you more perks, is to become a member of the Ant CGI Club. Details and links are on the screen now and in the description below. Okay, now that's out of the way, let's get on with the video. As you can imagine, there are a few options available when wanting to automate the rotation of a wheel in Maya. The simplest approach is to use direct connections. So here we have a wheel model plus a basic control. At the moment, the control doesn't do anything. Let's open the node editor and first connect the translate attribute on the control to the one on the wheel model. Now the wheel moves, but it doesn't rotate. So let's connect the rotations too. And the wheel follows now but it doesn't automatically rotate yet. We want it to turn around the X axis as the wheel moves along the Z axis. So what we can do is connect translate Z to rotate X. The wheel now turns as it moves along the Z axis. The issue we have is it's moving too slowly. But what we can do is use a multiply divide node to adjust the translation value which will then change how much the wheel turns. Let's create one. And open it up. And connect translate Z to input 1X. And then output X to the wheel model's rotate X attribute. We can use the input 2X attribute now to fine tune the rotation. With it set to 1, we just get the same as we had before. If we instead increase it to 1.6 and give that a try, the wheel rotation looks much better now. This is great for simple movements, but the issue we have is if the wheel orientation changes, the rotation breaks because it's only working on the movement along the Z axis. And that's the real world axis, remember, not the local one. You can see in the channel box that we also have movement along the X axis too now. Ideally, we need a way for the wheel to maintain the correct rotation, no matter which direction it's orientated in. Another option is to use a curve and a motion path. As the wheel control is told to travel along the path, we can use the U value attribute found on the motion path node to represent the distance the wheel has traveled. Again, adding a simple multiply divide node then lets us increase the rotation until we get the movement we want. This is great for more limited animations, but the movement of the vehicle is ultimately restricted to the curve. In a perfect world, the wheel should rotate correctly, no matter where it's placed in the scene or how it's orientated. It should also be free of any paths or curves, so the animators have full control. I've been experimenting with this for a while now, using both nodes and constraints, which to a certain degree did work. As you can see here, when we move the wheel it rotates, but the issue comes when the wheel direction changes. As you can see it spins, but settles back down into a better orientation as it begins to move forward again. This doesn't happen as much on a constraint based rig when the rig is at the world root. But as soon as you move it away, the same issue occurs. Now 
Now I've been working on a node-based version, which you can see on the screen now. And I'm happy to give this file to anybody out there who wants to take it on and see if they can solve this riddle. I'll also be including it in the source files too. In the meantime, let's now look at the approach most commonly used by many technical artists, and that is to use an expression. Okay, so here we have a slightly upgraded wheel rig. The model moves with the control, but doesn't rotate yet. In this instance, I'm using a joint to control the wheel model, mainly because the full rig is going to be joint based. You will see that the joint is inside a group too, which still has its translation values, so they haven't been frozen. This is important for this setup, so keep that in mind with yours. This setup needs a lot of location data, so we need a few nodes in the scene to reference. First create a locator and move it out in front of the wheel. Let's rename this LF underscore FR because it's the left front wheel. Remember, we will eventually need four of these for our car, so it's important to get the naming correct. Also add underscore der on the end to show that this represents the wheel's direction. Move this into the wheel group, which also has the joint. So as the control rotates, we can check the wheel's direction with that locator. We need a second locator now, so duplicate this one and move it out of the main control hierarchy. This shouldn't move with the rig. Let's call this underscore old pos. This locator will tell us where the wheel was previously, so we can work out how far it's traveled. Let's now match its position to the joint at the center of the wheel. If we check again, as the rig moves, the old position locator is left behind, which is perfect. Okay, so now we have those nodes in the scene, we can use an expression to use them to work out where the wheel is and what direction it's pointing in, so we know how much the wheel should turn. Let's open the expression editor. Now before we start building the expression, I must first mention that this approach is inspired by one originally created by Andrew Christofferson back in 1997. There are links to his channel below and on the screen now if you want to check out his other work. As mentioned, I've spent a lot of time playing with nodes and expressions to try and come up with a better solution, but always ended up coming back to this. So before you begin, it's worth giving the expression a name. Unfortunately, expressions are still Mel based in Maya, so bear with me. Okay, so first we need to store the radius of the wheel in a variable. Mel variables need a dollar sign before them. And let's keep the same naming conventions as the rest of the rig too. Again, because we will eventually need four expressions in the scene. The radius is just half the diameter, which we can work out quickly using a measuring tool. 78.3, and we'll just divide that by two. We also need a semicolon at the end of each command too, with this being mel. What I'm going to do now is click the create button, which will save that expression for me. I find sometimes if you don't save it, and then you change selections in the viewport, you can sometimes lose the expression if it's not saved. This can often happen if the filter up here is set to object slash attribute. Next, we want to store the positions of the locators and the main wheel group. We want these to be stored as vectors. So give it a name. And to make things easy, we can use the same name as a locator. So underscore old pos. Now we use the mel code, but it needs to be inside quotes. If using single quotes, make sure you use the correct ones or the code won't work. We will use xform and the flags to query the world space translation of the locator. We use double quotes for the locator name to differentiate it from the other quotes. And add in the locator name. So this will always be checking the position of the old position locator. Let's repeat that line. And now we need the wheels new position. 
we can use a wheel group to tell us this. And this is why I left the translation values on this group and the locators. Because they are frozen, the values are changed, and the expression doesn't work. Finally, we store the direction locator position. Click edit to save it, and also check it works. Okay, it does, good. Now we have those values, we can use them to calculate the direction and the movement. These are also stored as vectors. So, subtract the direction position from the wheel's new position. And then for the movement, subtract the wheel's new position from the old position. Now we have those values all worked out for us, we can use the mag command or magnitude to work out the distance traveled by checking the length of the vector. So we just check the movement value, which is essentially the old wheel position and the new one. With those done, we next need to work out the wheel's direction. And to do this, we use a dot product. What this does is compares two vectors and gives you a value, which tells you the direction the node or the control is pointing. We can actually visualize this in Maya using a vector product node, which is what I was originally using when I was building the node based version of the wheel rotation I showed you earlier. So with this setup, we are comparing the root control Z axis against the world Z axis. I've piped the output into a node just so we can see the values. In its current state, the wheel's local Z axis is pointing along the world Z axis. So the value in the third Z channel is one and it's zero in the X channel. If we rotate the control, so it's now pointing more along the X axis, you see the Z value goes down, whereas the X value goes up. So this node can basically be used to check something's direction. But for us, we'll be using the mel command instead in our expression. We compare the movement with the direction. And then the final value of one normalizes the output. Okay, now it's time to put all this together and rotate the wheel. We start with the axis. So we know we want to rotate the wheel joints X axis. Now we get the current wheel rotation because we want to add to its current value. Then we add the circumference, which is an easy number. And divide that by tau, which is 6.283 times the wheel's radius. Tau in maths is used to represent a full rotation around a circle in radians. So this part works out the distance around the wheel. Now we add in the distance. So multiply this by the dot product and the distance. Okay, finally, we need to move the old position locator back to the wheel. And we do this at the end of the expression because we need the wheel to move first. We need to work out all the calculations and then we move this locator back to the wheel's current position. All we do is we match the transforms of the old position locator with the wheel group. Click edit to make sure it's worked. Ah, I missed a semicolon up here. That's better. Now if we move the wheel control, nothing happens. And this is because we need animation, so the expression will run. If I add a couple of keys, and we run it, we can see the wheel is now turning. I'll turn on the wireframe so we can see it a bit clearer. This is okay, but ideally we want to be able to see the wheel rotate as we move it in the viewport. 
What we can do is add a dummy variable at the end of the expression which forces it to run. Just something simple like this, so it's checking when our control is moving along the Z translation, which is the key direction that we want it to move in. Now the wheel turns as we move the control. We can also reorientate the wheel and it still rotates correctly, because it's now not just using a single attribute to calculate the rotation, instead it's using the correct vectors. So that's the basic expression in and running, but in this final section I want to expand upon it a little more to make the wheel more flexible for the animator. You'll notice we have this extra lift control here. The wheel rotates as it's on the floor, but it continues even when it's lifted, so we can check for this in the expression. On the main control are three attributes, rotate multi, manual rotate, and rotate type. We can use these two to add in more control options and flexibility. Let's go back into the expression editor. So it's this part we want to update. First, let's add in an if statement and we can check if the lift controls translate y attribute is greater than zero. If it is, then the wheel is off the ground. At this stage, we just tell the wheels rotate attribute to stay as it currently is so it won't rotate any further. Next, we use else if to check the rotation type. We can just use the attribute name as checking it will return a value of zero or one. Zero is auto and one is manual. If it is one, so it's set to manual, we can tell the expression to use the manual rotate attribute to turn the wheel. Finally, if none of these are true, it defaults to using the automatic rotation. So we can nestle the main script under this option. As an extra bonus, we can multiply this by the rotate multi attribute to control the rotation speed. Okay, that's added. Click edit to save. Let's check this out. So with auto enabled, the wheel rotates automatically. We can use rotate multi to control the speed of the rotation. If we change the rotate type to manual, the wheel stops moving, but we can control it ourselves with the manual rotate attribute. As a final check, when we lift the wheel off the ground, it stops moving. Okay, so here we go, all four wheels rigged. And all I did was I used the same expression, but just changed the names so that it worked with the different wheels. And as you can see, we can use the additional attributes and controls to fine tune the animation. So there you go, a few options there for you for automating a wheel's rotation. Now I'd love to hear what techniques you all use to automate the rotation of your wheels, so please let me know in the comments below. And if you get the chance, Take a look at my node based version and let's see if we can work out a way to get it working and then we can share that with the whole community. So now we have the wheels rotating. In the next video, we will explore simulating tire pressure. So there we go. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, please post them in the Ant CGI community discord server. That's the best place to reach me. And if I'm not available, there are plenty of other talented people around to help. Remember to help support future content and keep these videos free, hit the thanks button below, visit the Ant CGI store, or join the Ant CGI club. You can also treat me to a coffee at my coffee page. The link is on the screen now and in the description below. Thanks again for watching. This is Ant CGI signing off and I will see you on the next one.